The Persona series always stood in the shadow of bigger franchises in the RPG genre, like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest. This changed quite a bit at the end of the PlayStation 2 era when Shin Megami Tensei Persona 4 was released. It was one of the best, if not the best, role-playing game on the already with RPGs overloaded PS2. But this release happened almost a decade ago, and with Persona 5 just around the corner, we would like to remind you how great the Persona series is. The Persona series is actually a spin-off from the Megami Tensei series. The 1996 PlayStation 1 release of Revelations Persona took place at a school that was also seen in Shin Megami Tensei. But from that point forward, each of the games had a story of its own, despite some cameo appearances. I'm glad you're back to normal, though. Your fur's all fuzzy again. Can I... can, can I feel it? No! The franchise now has five games in its main series and four that are considered spin-offs. For the sake of this video, we only focus on the main series. Do me a favor and behave yourself, all right? Where most RPGs use the fantasy setting, the Persona series takes place in modern-day Japan. But this version of our world is infused with mythology and the occult. Each of the stories take place in a different part of the country, but the central location is always a school. It's, a, uh, it's not really that important, but, well, yesterday on TV, I, uh... In Persona 4, you got sucked into a TV to enter another dimension. And in Persona 5, it's an app on your smartphone. These are the elements that make Persona very relatable. But a relatable world is not all fun and games. Wait! What? Oh, oh, come on. now! Enough, Enough with, with the charade. charade! Isn't it awful to deceive people? To deceive yourself? What's so bad about doing what I want to do? The stories in Persona are pretty deep and can get dark at times. Each of the characters are flawed in some way, and during the game, their dark story will slowly unravel. Many social issues are brought up, ranging from loss, fear, and trauma to LGBT issues and depression. I already know that you're me. You're me. And I'm you, damn it. The social elements in the game world really play an important role. Persona 2 focused on the effects of rumors on the fabric of reality, while Persona 3 was about depression and darkness inside people. Persona 4 was about the negative influence of mass media, while the fifth game in the series is about young people fighting for personal freedom in a restrictive society. We're gonna catch all these shitty adults by surprise and make ourselves known to the world! Every game in the Persona series is about school kids and their troubles, and the story takes place over the period of one school year. Life at school is just as an important part of the games as combat is. You need to complete tests and learn skills that way, but you also need to form social bonds with other kids. This means going on romantic dates and eating noodles with your friends. Hmm, this is delicious. It has an interesting taste that makes you hungry for more. See? See? Another bowl, please! Keep the noodles hard! Your social link with other characters is a very important aspect of the game, as your relationship with other characters influences the powers of your persona. Never skip school, and don't forget to do your chores! The other major element of the series is dungeon crawling. When it comes to its gameplay, the Persona series has always been quite traditional. Ever since the first release over 20 years ago, combat has been a turn-based affair. The first two games in the series used random encounters, which was replaced by models representing enemy groups in the later games. The enemies you fight are so-called shadows. When you engage in combat, the screen goes into combat mode and the fight starts. <laughs> Some fights can be very unforgiving, as is the case with most JRPGs. Grinding through dungeons and making your character strong is a key aspect of the Persona series. The combat is fast-paced, which makes the series feel quite active. Don't overdo it. Don't 
The aspect that really makes the Persona series stand out from the crowd are the Persona. These spirits can be leveled up and help you in a fight. You can also fuse Persona together, resulting in a more powerful Persona that also gets new powers. There are lots of different Persona, each with their own skills and abilities. Some powerful Persona can be created out of more than 10 different Persona, so there's really a gotta catch em all vibe here. Some say it's a mature adaptation of Pokemon, and we all know that's not necessarily a bad thing. Persona! The way you summon Persona is always a bit twisted. In Persona 3, you had to fake a suicide by putting a gun against your head. In Persona 4, you would summon the Persona using tarot cards as if they were some sort of demons. And in Persona 5, you rip your own face off like Nicolas Cage and reveal your Persona that way. Even though this has little to do with the gameplay, it does offer food for thought. It's a commentary on our own modern society full of empty gestures and fake smiles. Okay, enough philosophy for now. Here. Persona is not all serious business though. The series offers enough room for funny situations. For example, when the boys walked into the girls at the hot springs in Persona 4 Golden. We'll have to punish them later. Wow, you got him good. My aim's pretty deadly, huh? Or the time the group got together in a club and played the king's game. Smooch! Smooch! Okay. But it's my first time. Be gentle. Or that time when Teddy crowd surfed and the rest failed miserably. The Persona series is full with these funny moments. It's one of the reasons the series is so beloved. Persona really mixes serious issues with easygoing moments. Uh, all right. I'll show you what it means to be a man. Hey, wait! They just dodged out of the way. How? My, it would seem you have a most unusual destiny lying before you. <laughs> a central part of each of the Persona games is the so-called Velvet Room. This room does not exist in the real-world version of Tokyo, but it's a location that is between the conscious and the unconscious, almost like it only exists in your mind. This Velvet Room serves as a quest hub but looks different in every game. It was an elevator in Persona 3. A limousine in Persona 4. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. And a club in Persona 4 dancing all night. In Persona 5, the main character is a troubled teen who ends up being on probation after he assaulted a man. This is why the Velvet Room in the newest Persona is actually a jail. Allow me to observe the path of your rehabilitation. Even though the music in the Persona series is created by multiple composers, Shoji Meguro is the one who's most associated with the series. Persona 2 is the only game he wasn't involved with, but he did become the music director on the PSP releases of Persona 2, Innocent Sin, and Eternal Punishment. Meguro uses a mix of funk, jazz, hip-hop, and a bit of hard rock in his soundtracks. For Persona 5, he chose Acid Jazz because he believed it matches the theme of the game. My heart is a furnace, had a sailing, my word of conflict, one goes what keeps me going. We hope we got you a little bit excited about the Persona series. Leave a comment whether the series now got your interest. If you're looking for a game, Persona 5 is the newest game in the series and it's available on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. We have left a referral link down in the video description. For the older games in the series, we would refer you to eBay and you should be prepared to pay a serious amount of money because the Persona games are real collector's items. Come on, you gotta sit closer up! Yukiko, quiet! <laughs>